Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, Michigan Military Technical and Historical Society Museum uh, vehicle restoration shop video. <clears throat> uh, I'll be honest, I, I was out here last night working and I shot one of these videos and I was uploading it and was watching it and I'm like, oh my god, that is horrible. So uh, I'm redoing this and I'm probably going to do two today just to split things up, talk about two different projects. Uh, so those of you who kind of follow, may be following us on Facebook and and, and whatnot may recognize the uh, the three vehicles that they're sitting here in front of me. Uh, these are uh, Clark Cat. Uh, well, originally we thought they were Model Bs. I believe they're actually Model Cs uh, based on some of the stuff I've been finding. At least I think one of them is. Uh, these we picked up. Uh, I was talking to a gentleman at the, at the MVPA Nationals. Uh, he saw the Clark there there and... Uh, was saying, talking about how these these three Clark cats that he had, <clears throat> these uh, came out of the Muskegon, uh, Getty Road, uh, the Continental Engine Plant on Getty Road in Muskegon. Uh, that's where they made the tank engines. Uh, gentleman worked there, retired from there. Uh, he worked on the AVDS production line, which was the the tank engine that was used in the M M60s and. A number of other vehicles, M88, still I believe still uses a variant of it. Uh, <clears throat> these three vehicles uh, he uh, acquired from the plant. Uh, I guess uh, at the time General Dynamics was running the plant and they were getting rid of anything in the plant that was gasoline powered. Uh, so they had a whole fleet of these and they were scrapping them and I guess he saved these three. Uh, the one here directly in front of us with the hood off uh, and the one behind it. Uh, he claims that he drove them home. Uh, he lived about eight miles from the plant. This one over here was a parts vehicle. It's missing a whole bunch of stuff. He picked it up to have some spare parts. So we have two. Uh, we're going to definitely keep one for the museum, uh, put it in the museum on exhibit. I'm hoping to do that soon. I am not going to restore this. Uh, this is exactly how it came out of the, the plant at Getty Road. This is what it looked like when it worked there. Uh, we're, I'm going to roll these, roll it out, and I'm going to pressure wash it and get all the gunk off of it, and probably drain the fluids out of it, whatever's left in it. Uh, put some fresh oil in it. Just kind of spruce them up a little bit. I've been kind of going over them, but uh, this is the one we're going to keep. <clears throat> uh, it's probably the most original or most complete. It. Uh, we know we have the we have the serial number. This one actually has a very nice data plate on it. Uh, we know this was delivered to the Continental Engine Plant on uh, December 26, 1950. I'm going to make the assumption that it was probably acquired as part of the ramp up in production that would have been going on for the in response to the Korean War at that point in time. Uh, it's kind of uh, ironic. Uh, these Clark Cats are powered by a little. Continental four-cylinder, so this engine would have been made at the other Continental plant uh, just uh, up the road. I think this was the the plant that was actually in town that has been since been torn down. Uh, they made these little four bangers and they sold it to Clark, put it in this Clark Cat, and then they turned around and sold the Clark Cat back to Continental. Uh, right now I have the uh, the seat out. I gotta figure out the the seats are pretty roached. I gotta figure out what I want to do with those. Uh, but I took the cover off because uh, one of the unfortunate thing is is these gas all three of these gas tanks are about three quarter to half full, and he's I guess the guy told me he hasn't driven these things in many years, and from the smell of it, this gasoline is ancient. So I gotta get uh, at least drain it. Uh, possibly, I don't know yet if I'm going to pull, try and pull these tanks out and have them cleaned, but, uh, we'll figure that out later at the, at, right now I just got to get them drained or at least this one, uh, get this one drained and cleaned up. Uh, it had a, it had a battery that was sitting in it obviously for many years. So I need to get in here and clean that up, stop the corrosion. So like, again, like we're not going to do a restoration on this, but we need to get that battery debris you know the that lovely acidic powder out of there get that cleaned up maybe put some rust 
I'm, in here I might put some of that rust inhibitor just to try and stop this corrosion. Uh, I've been kind of tinkering with this one. Uh, it had a bunch of broken gauges. So the, the, the parts Clark, Clark cat over here had some nice gauges in it. So I swapped the gauges out. I particularly like the ammeter that is a continental ammeter. So I swapped that out as well. Uh, the steering wheel in this one was pretty banged up. Uh, the, and the parts one had a really, really nice steering wheel. So I've swapped the steering wheels over on it. So just trying to make it look a little bit more presentable uh, without actually going into a full-on restoration. So here's our, the parts one that we got. Uh, I do love the fact that somebody put the GTO Judge on there at some point in time. It's kind of fun. Uh, and then this guy here, <clears throat> this one does have a data plate on it and uh, I've been trying to read it for a while now and I think I finally got the numbers off of it. It's It had about 37 layers of paint on it. And I put a little paint stripper on there, stripped it off. It's just beat up quite badly. So uh, those are the three Clark cats. <clears throat> Come to the museum somewhere in the next, uh, hopefully in the next month or so, and this this guy will be in there. We're going to have to do some serious rearranging because uh, I also want to get the Clark CA1 bulldozer in there. And that will be the subject of my next video so that it, this doesn't run too long and doesn't get all rambly. So, uh, and that's going to be pretty much it as far as vehicles going into that into the museum. That's, I mean, we're stretching that right now. So, uh Please, everyone go to mimths.org uh, and click on the Help the Museum and donate to our future fund so that we can, we need a bigger building. We need, we either need to get a bigger building and move or add on to the building that we have. Any of, either one of these options is going to take money and we don't have enough of that right now. So if you really want to see us preserve this stuff, and you really want to see the Clarkter, which is living under that little cocoon back there uh, on display where people can actually see it because it will not fit through the door on the current building. So even though it is fully restored and, you know, just one took a gold at the MVPA Nats and is ready to be seen that we can't show it where we have in with what we have right now. So, uh, again, mimths.org and... Uh, or you can just PayPal us at mimths.org. Send us some money. Uh, we also, you know, we can you also donate money to the vehicle restoration projects because none of this is cheap, and uh, we need parts to finish things. So, enough rambling about that. One final sweep of our three Clarkters. Uh, these two Clarkters are probably going to be going up for sale shortly. Or not Clarkters, Clark Cats. I'm sorry, I make that mistake quite frequently. So I used to sing Clarkter. These two Clark Cats are, pro are are definitely, we don't have the room or the need for three of them. So these, these two bad boys are going to be going up for sale soon. Uh, and this one here will be in the museum. So stop by and check it out. And uh, I'm going to go to the back of the shop now and shoot a second video. So tune in for that one too. Thanks.